Jade Helm 15, a military exercise of grand scale. The military claims the exercise is for overseas training, yet three of these United States have been listed as hostile. The term mastering the human domain reveals to us that Jade Helm 15 is more than just a military exercise. It's also an exercise of the new field of geospatial intelligence, using human domain analytics to map the politics and thoughts of any nation, state, city, right down to the individual. Jade Helm 15, that's what the United States Army is calling a large-scale military exercise. Special Operations Command will be training with other armed units beginning in July. In a recent Infowars.com report, Master the Human Domain, the domestic plan behind Jade Helm, we break down what the Jade Helm logo refers to. In brief, a new discipline in intelligence has been at center stage for the past decade, Activity-Based Intelligence, or ABI. According to TrajectoryMagazine.com, the human domain, or human dimension, which is a vital and integral part of ABI, is defined as the presence, activities, including transactions, both physical and virtual, culture, social structure, organization, networks and relationships, motivations, intent, vulnerabilities, and capabilities of humans, single or groups, across all domains of the operational environment, space, air, maritime, ground, and cyber. This article goes on to say that the focus on mastering the human domain was born out of a merging of three already existing disciplines of intelligence. That may be the case for this branding of this idea, but the exercise of mapping the human domain right down to the individual is a long-standing institutionalized strategy that has been going on for well over 100 years. What reason would the United States government have to invest so much time, resources, and money in order to pinpoint exact pockets of thought in a country founded on free thought, expression, and most of all, outspoken words against its own government? During his famous farewell address, Eisenhower warned the American people of an imminent and internal threat, a scientific elite. We must also be alert to the equal and opposite danger that public policy could itself become the captive of a scientific, technological elite. The title, scientific elite, to most Americans might seem like nothing more than ordinary intangible rhetoric typically thrown around by politicians during their speeches. This time, however, Eisenhower was not speaking in abstractions. There actually is a scientific elite. Jade Helm 15 is anything but the American way. It's a domestic scientific control grid whose purpose is domination and control. A technological infrastructure for authoritarian political control is not the end goal, but a means to that end of eugenics. The term eugenics, coined by Charles Darwin's half-cousin, Sir Francis Galton in 1883, is a science dedicated to the engineering of the human genome by selectively breeding those humans with what they consider to be desirable qualities, such as intelligence, athleticism, etc., and eliminating those humans without these attributes and all races of humans unlike their own. Out of this, race theory and race science was born, Carl Pearson, a protege of Galton, assembled a biometrics laboratory based out of the University of London in 1907 in order to collect data about people mostly based on race. He also published a journal entitled Biometrica, which became very influential with American scientists and financiers who were becoming extremely interested in the concept of eugenics. As this movement grew in popularity, top American industrialists threw their money into the game, Carnegie, Harriman and Rockefeller were among the top contributors. California became the eugenics capital of the world, while on the East Coast, Cold Spring Harbor Research Facility located on Long Island was collecting and storing biometric information on average Americans in order to begin the elimination of families as well as entire races of people. Through the efforts of the California eugenicist, mostly through written pamphlets and endowments mostly from the Rockefellers and Harriman, the eugenics movement found a second home in Germany in the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute. 
this pre-World War II, well-funded international scientific community based around the eugenics movement was cementing its place as a standard in human academia when World War II broke out in full scale. The then CEO of IBM, Thomas J. Watson, worked hand in hand with Nazi Germany. In 1933, it was Watson who enthusiastically helped the Nazi plan and funded their national census, which according to historian Edwin Black in his 2001 publication, IBM and the Holocaust, the 1933 census with design help and tabulation services provided by IBM through its German subsidiary proved to be pivotal to the Nazis and their efforts to identify, isolate, and ultimately destroy the country's Jewish, Gypsy, and other minority communities as well as single out political opposition. While much of the world was forever altered by the events of the war, this eugenics-based community remained together. A similar and frighteningly more advanced version of this eugenics-based biometrics program is being tested right now under the name Jade Helm 15. While the term eugenics is no longer used in the mainstream openly, the practice of eugenics is still around and stronger than ever. Jade Helm 15 exercises the next generation of technology in the political domination arena. It is simply another technological step beyond the Cold Springs Harbor Research Facilities Biometrics Program or Thomas J. Watson's Census of Germany and their disciplines developed during the eugenics heyday in the early 20th century are still being practiced and advanced today. Mandatory toxic vaccines, abortion, family courts, contaminated water, and of course biometrics are just a few of the branches that grew out of the original eugenics trunk, still present and dominating over our society today. In 2010, the GeoInt Symposium, an annual geointelligence, geospatial, an activity-based intelligence conference held a presentation entitled Mastering the Human Domain. Geospatial intelligence and human geography were the main talking points. Jade Helm is born and begins to take form. The human domain encompasses the totality of the physical, cultural, and social environments that influence human behavior, explained Admiral McRaven Success in this domain won't be achieved by traditional ground, naval, or air forces. Instead, success in the human domain will depend upon understanding the human terrain and establishing trust with those individuals who occupy that space. The goal is to see if groups of these special forces can move around the civilian population without being noticed, you know, blend in so they can place themselves in strategic positions. McRaven continued by saying, Building understanding of the human domain requires boots on the ground, feeding information into the network. A living active map where human beings are movable real-time landmarks and everyone's personal thoughts, feelings, medical information, belief systems, history, basically every shred of information about the individuals in any region on that map will make up the terrain. When mastering the human domain, the special operators are the masters they are the key that turns this whole machine on. And regardless of whether the military calls this project activity-based intelligence, ABI, geospatial intelligence coupled with human domain analytics, what we are looking at is a nexus between private tech firms, homeland security and law enforcement, domestic surveillance and the domestic use of special forces. How is any of this legal how is any of this not a violation of the Fourth Amendment? A tech startup, Recorded Future, that uses a system of filtering through and classifying open source data demonstrated their predictive analytics capability during the 2012 GeoInt conference. Trajectory Magazine reports, the concept is to find people who are talking about the future. Vice President for Recorded Future, Matt Kodima says, we can basically roll back the clock. We know that this particular did happen in this time at this place. Now let's go back a week before that and look at the publications. Who was predicting that accurately? Who wasn't? Add this layer of predictive analytics on top of the other human domain analytic and you begin to get an idea of the scope and range of the overarching 
inescapable control grid these scientific controllers are constructing. At the same GeoInt conference in 2012, Jeff Jonas, the chief scientist for IBM Entity Analytics and an IBM fellow, talked about the potential for open source data utilization. He said, in typical IBM tradition, space, time, travel data is the ultimate biometric. It seems that IBM and the scientific elite's perspective shifted from the master race to mastering the human domain. So we probably won't see doors kicked in and military trucks shipping political opponents to their demise during this summer's Jade Helm 15 military procedure. However, as Brzezinski states in Between Two Ages, the technotronic era involves the gradual appearance of a more controlled society. Just like Watson's census was not the end sought by the Nazis, neither is Jade Helm 15 an end, but a means to a historically predictable end. We must also be alert to the equal and opposite danger that public policy could itself become the captive of a scientific, technological elite. In the councils of government, we must car guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex.